Hi everyone and welcome to my channel English Fluency Lab where I help you improve your English language skills. So friends this is idioms related to food part 2. I hope you enjoyed watching part 1 and if you haven't seen part 1 I will leave a link in the description box. So the format of the video continues to be the same. After every idiom I will give you three choices. You have to guess the right answer. Once you do that I'm going to uh, let you know the correct answer and also share the explanation with you. So if you're ready let's get started. So idiom number six is taking it with a grain of salt or taking it with a pinch of salt. Now what are the three options to this? A. Bargain for a better price. B. Not believe it to be, to be completely true or correct. And C. Agree enthusiastically. So friends what do you think is the correct answer? You can note it down or make a mental note or just pause the video and write the answer somewhere whichever, whichever is convenient to you. Alright so here is the correct answer. Taking it with a grain or a pinch of salt means the right answer is number B. Not believe it to be completely true or correct. And this is the picture of a pinch of salt. Now this idiom comes from the fact that it's easier to eat food if the food has a little bit of salt but not too much of salt. You will not be able to eat the food if it has got too much of salt. This idiom is used when talking about information that may not be completely true. It means you listen to or read the information but you don't accept or believe it to be complete to, to completely you need to check the facts to be sure it's accurate so you may listen to the information but you don't believe it to be correct you would like to check it out yourself so that is what it means by taking it with a grain of salt or taking it with a pinch of salt the more common one is taking it with a pinch of salt so let us look at some examples my friend told me that she saw a ghost last night but I took it with a pinch of salt because she tends to exaggerate things so here the person is not believing the believing her friend because her friend is in the habit of exaggerating things. So she is taking it with a pinch of salt. The weather forecast said it would rain all day, but I took it with a pinch of salt because sometimes they are not accurate. And the last one, he claimed to have caught a fish as big as a shark, but I took it with a pinch of salt because he's known for telling tall tales. Right? So I hope you understand the meaning of taking it with a pinch of salt. It means not believing it to be correct. You would like to check the facts before you believe that information to be true or not. So let's move on to idiom number seven. Idiom number seven is cherry pick. Let's look at the three choices. To choose only specific items, the best parts and ignore the rest. Have a positive attitude. Write about very recent events without considering the history. So friends, which one do you think is the correct answer? Pause the video or just make a mental note. And the correct answer is number A. To choose only specific items, the best parts and ignore the rest. Now this is the this is the photograph of a cherry. Now this fruit is called a cherry. When you are picking cherries off the trees, you need to look for the small cherries among all the leaves. You select the cherries and ignore the leaves. Right? So you're being selective out here. You're only plucking the cherries, you're not you're not taking out the leaves. So that is what cherry cherry picking means. Taking out only certain things. Let us understand this better. So cherry picking is selecting only a small amount of information or data, the best part, ignoring the rest of the information. It's usually used with a negative connotation for someone who chooses only specific pieces of information in support of their views and ignores the bigger contest. So cherry picking means that you have been given a lot of information, but you choose only a part of that information for your convenience or because you don't you want to ignore the rest of the information. That is what that is the meaning of cherry pick. Let us look at a few examples. She always cherry picks the best clothes from the store, leaving the rest behind. That means she selects only the best clothes. The coach accused the accusing team of cherry picking the easiest opponents for their matches. Don't just cherry pick the positive feedback. Consider the constructive criticism as well to improve your work. So I hope the under meaning of cherry pick is clear that you have a lot of information, but you choose only a part of the information to suit to suit to, to suit yourself or because you have some motive behind it. Okay, so that is the meaning of cherry pick. Let's go on to idiom number eight. Idiom number eight is not my cup of tea. Let's look at the three choices. A. It makes your stomach hurt. B. You've never done it before. C. You don't like it very much. Take a minute friends and un pause the video and tell me what is the right answer here. Well the right answer is you don't like it very much. Okay so that is what not my cup of tea means. Now friends as all of you know tea is a very common drink in India but not everybody likes it. Okay, somebody might like coffee, somebody would like some other drink. 
So if you say that something is not my cup of tea, it is a polite and diplomatic way to say you don't like it, right? That you don't like it and um, while somebody else may like it, but you don't like it. So that is what a not my cup of tea means. Let's look at some examples. I appreciate classical music, but heavy metal is not my cup of tea. Going to crowded parties is not my cup of tea. I prefer quiet gatherings with close friends. This person is trying to say that she does not like crowded parties. She would like to have uh, quieter gatherings with close friends. Last one. Some people enjoy spicy food, but it's not my cup of tea. I prefer milder flavors. Okay, so this person is saying that spicy food is not her cup of tea, which means that she does not like spicy food. Let's move on to number nine. Rub salt in the wound. Option A. To talk too much about one topic. B. To make a sad person feel even worse. And C. To help a sick person feel better. Which one do you think is the correct answer, friends? And the correct answer is number B. To make a sad person feel even worse. Let's understand. Now, friends, a wound is a type of an injury. An open injury that is bleeding. Now, if you put salt in that wound, it would be even more painful. The idiom rub salt in the wound means to make a sad person feel even worse, usually deliberately, right? So person is already in a sad situation and you're saying or doing something which kind of, which kind of adds to the situation, adds to the person's pain. So which that is what rub salt in the wound means. For example, my sister is, my sister is so insensitive. I just lost my job and she's rubbing salt in the wound by constantly commenting about how great her own job is right so this person is already fa facing facing a bad situation that he's lost his job and the sister is commenting about how great her job is which is adding you know rubbing salt in that person's wound let us look at a few examples after i failed my exam my friend rubbed salt in the wound by reminding me of my poor study habits losing the game was hard enough but when the opposing team started celebrating right in front of us it felt like they were running salt in the wound. When I accidentally broke my friend's favorite mug, they made sure to rub salt in the wound by telling me how much it meant to them. So you see, there is already a situation where a person is sad or a bad situation and somebody else is adding more grief to that situation. So that is the meaning of rub salt in the wound. Let us look at the last one for this video. Number 10 is a sharp cookie. Let's look at the three examples. A. Enthusiastic. B. Intelligent. C. Very young. What do you think is the correct answer, friends? The correct answer is intelligent. A sharp cookie means an intelligent person. Now, these are cookies, but I'm not sure how they came to be part of these idioms. Describing someone as a sharp cookie means the person is smart, intelligent, or a very fast learner. means somebody picks up things very fast as compared to the others. For example, a boy who started college at age 14 would be a sharp cookie. But let's look a couple of more examples. Number one, Sarah is a sharp cookie. She quickly grasps complex concepts and excels in problem solving. Even though he appears quiet, John is a sharp cookie. His analytical skills and attention to detail make him a valuable asset to the team. Don't underestimate Emily. She may seem young, but she's a sharp cookie who knows how to navigate challenging situations with ease. So friends, the meaning of sharp cookie means someone who's very intelligent, and someone who grasps concepts very well. So friends, those are the five idioms for this video. I hope that you have uh, found value in this video. What I would like you to do is that please uh, use these five idioms and make sentences and post them in the comments below. If you have liked the video, please give me a like. Please subscribe to my channel. Please share with your friends and family. And uh, please do press the bell because I keep coming up with videos like these to help you improve your English language skills. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.